gamble. I'm going to say Alexandria. Got it for a quarter million dollars. You got three lifelines. What? <laughs> Let's go with Limer. Yes, you want $125,000. Way to go, John. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Good evening. And welcome to Tuesday Night at Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Yes, it's night two, a celebrity millionaire. Sunday night, Alec Baldwin won a quarter million dollars for his charity. Pause. Did a little victory dance for us. It was just great. Now returning to the hot seat, John Stewart, who's won 125000 so far. Pretty good. But I understand, somebody told me, you were a little bit nervous the other night. Uh, not for most of it, but on the, the higher level questions. The $64,000 question, I was thinking about it, and I felt something. You know, and I thought maybe it was just like a hunch or something. It turned out uh, you were playing footsies with me. Oh, well. <laughs> and I, just, I, didn't, I didn't respond to that well. I felt... Just trying to make you feel at home. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't care for that. And then the winking. I don't like the winking. You'll get to love it after a while. But All we're right. glad you're here, John. I'm, I'm, exci I'm very excited to be here. I appreciate it. You know who's right behind you? Your old soulmate, Alec Baldwin, Alec who Bowen. was with you all the way. And I brought another friend as well. Yes, Kermit, how are you? It's nice Hi to there. see you. Oh, I am so thrilled to be here, Regis. I really am. I, I thought I was going to get to play, though. What happened? I think I can do the flipper finger thing. <laughs> no, no? Well, you know, we never had a frog on the show yet, but you could be the first one. Oh, well, thank you. I'm glad you let me borrow your suit, too. It's fortunate that we wear the same size. <laughs> Can you I know, tell you something about You Kermit? two guys look good together. I want to, he looks like a hit frog. <laughs> Doesn't he? Yeah. All right, John. Hey, <laughs> I'll make you an offer you can't refuse. Sopranos or something. All right, listen, my man, you've won $125,000. You're three questions away, believe it or not, from winning $1 million for your charity, which is the Alzheimer's Association. You have two of your lifelines left, 50-50, and you can phone a friend. If you want to play along with John, go to abc.com right now and click on to the Enhanced TV game. I'm sure you'll have a lot of fun doing that. John, you ready to go here? No? <laughs> Please say yes, John. Audience, are you ready? Yes! Let's do it. Let's play. Who wants to be a millionaire? Here we go. All right, for $250,000, here it is. Before Bobby Riggs' famous loss to Billie Jean King, who did he defeat in the Battle of the Sexes match? Betty Stove, Margaret Smith Court, Virginia Wade, Yvonne Gulligan. You remember this, don't you? Oh, yeah, that bit, yeah. He was a tennis player, and he played Billie Jean King, and it was Battle of the Sexes, and he used to wear uh, like a golf cape, like tie one hand behind his back or golf sure, clubs yeah, on. Yeah. And, uh, but all these ladies are tennis players, like, so that's it's not so easy. You know what I mean? If it had been like uh, Virginia Wade and uh, Arnold Palmer, you know, I'd, I'd know it. <laughs> but you put four women tennis players on yeah. here in, in what I think is a punitive measure on your part. <laughs> I almost... Uh, it's $250,000, John. Yeah, but it ain't coming out of the Regis collection. That's you know right. It's <laughs> just money. You bet your bibby on that. You want to call somebody? You got a sports fan on your uh, phone you have, list? You have Bobby Riggs' number? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He's hot, this guy. <laughs> give, me, give me the 50-50 there. All right, let's narrow it down, computer. Take away two of those wrong answers, please. No! <laughs> Who'd you think it was? You know what's great about this now is now it's just two women. I actually, th I, think it's, I think it's Virginia Wade, quite frankly, uh, or Margaret Smith Court. <laughs> Anybody on the phone list you think might know this? Because this is kind of a tough one. It is a tough one, isn't it? Yes. Uh, I would like to phone a friend. Who do you want to call? Anybody? <laughs> I only have one, so <laughs> I, might as well, I might as well call that person. DJ, call DJ. All right, we'll get DJ on the line, AT&T, please. DJ. Yes. Hi, Regis Philbin here from ABC's Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. How you doing? Good. We've got John Stewart in the hot seat right now. I know. He's won, <laughs> won $125,000.
going for 250000 right now. Okay. He's going to read you the question. Two possible answers, two DJ. Possible We're down to two. John, it's all yours. 30 seconds starts now. Before Bobby Riggs' famous loss to Billie Jean King, who did he defeat in a battle of the sexes match? Margaret Smith Court or Virginia Wade? Who did Bobby Riggs defeat in another match before Billie Jean King, Margaret Smith Court or Virginia Wade? That's what I said. I think Margaret Smith Court is an earlier era tennis player. I think Virginia Wade. You do? Are you pretty sure about I, that? I, I wouldn't bet my life on it, but I'm fairly sure about it. That it's Virginia Wade. I think Margaret Court Smith is an earlier era. I see. But uh, I think... <laughs> So what did he say? <laughs> he said he wouldn't bet his life on it. Is, is, can I ask you this? Is yeah. my life depend on this? Pretty much. He wants you to know something. The Alzheimer's uh, Association would win a quarter million dollars if, if you get this. And if you don't, they're back down to $32,000. Yeah, but they'd forget about it. <laughs> You were doing so good, too. My everybody, grandmother had it, I know. Everybody That's was pulling for, for him. him. <laughs> My grandmother, I can I know, no, for you. we know you're kidding. All right, caught a million here. He kept saying Margaret Smith Court was from an earlier era, Virginia Wade, but you know, Billy, this Bobby Riggs, Billy Jean King thing happened many years ago. What would you do? You tell me because I will do what you tell me to do because I'm very fond of you. You know, when I'm in a case like this, yeah. and I really don't know the answer, and I'm playing for a charity, and I want to help them all I can, I take the money and run. That's what I would do. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to walk with the money. Are you? Yeah. Well, you want to take a guess before you go? I think Virginia Wade. Virginia Wade. No, my friend, it was Margaret Smith Court, but hey, 125000 Come on, John, there you go. There we go, baby. Thank you very much. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. Right out there, baby. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. the right thing. He walked away with $125,000 for the Alzheimer's Association, a charity I know he cares deeply about. Now it's time to meet our eight remaining celebrities vying for the hot seat, and they are Joy Behar, New York City. Norm McDonald, Quebec City, Quebec. Drew Carey, Cleveland, Ohio. Vivica A. Fox, Los Angeles, California. Tyra Banks, Los Angeles, California. John Lovitz, Tarzana, California. Charlie Sheen, New York City. John Puffy Combs, New York City. Okay, how are we all feeling at this point in the show? Charlie, you're still here, huh? I am still here. Richard. Attaboy. Yes, all right, it's time to take a look at tonight's first fastest finger question. Everybody get ready now. Here we go. Put these U.S. presidents in the order they attended Harvard University, starting with the earliest. Franklin D. Roosevelt, John Adams, John F. Kennedy, Theodore Roosevelt. Okay, time's up. Let's see the answer in the correct order, starting with the earliest. John Adams, Theodore Roosevelt. Franklin D. Roosevelt, and then John F. Kennedy. Let's see who got it right at the fastest time. Just two of them, the winner, Drew Carey. Yeah, Drew. Right over here, my man. Congratulations. Gonna go for it again. Yes, sir, Drew Carey. Going for a million bucks this time. When you come back. Back in the hot seat. Drew Carey was, um, you all recall, he was the hero of the last uh, celebrity <laughs> uh, run we had here. Won a half million dollars for the Ohio Library Association. Yeah. And he's, back, excited. and he's back playing for them again tonight. Yes. But I'd like to know, how many books does this library need exactly? Yeah, that, that's a good question. Thank you, Joy Behar, lover of the arts. <laughs> <laughs> I think 
think the library's great. Remember, you know, the, you know everybody brings about the internet, how great, you know, you can look things up, you yeah. meet people. Sure. You can do all that at the library. That's right. You don't need the internet. The library is the greatest. Free books are great. Every great society is funded by, is, is founded on libraries and knowledge for everybody. All right, Drew, shall we uh, get started? You know sure. the rules by now. You know about the lifelines. 50-50, ask the audience, phone a friend. So if you're ready, Drew Carey, let's do it again. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? For $100, Drew, which of the following body parts does a dog normally wag when it's happy? Head, ear, tail, spleen. Uh, see tail. Let's get moving. <laughs> Final answer? Yes. Yeah, Got it right for 100 bucks. Yes, sir. $200. According to a common saying, a person who is lazy in his work is doing what on the job? Starring in a sitcom. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is he lying down? Is he exercising? Borrowing money? Surfing the whip? Hey, lying down. Lying down. Right answer. Yes, yeah, you got $200. He's up to $300. What color do you get when you mix red and yellow? Pink? Orange? Purple? None of your business. <laughs> uh, orange. Right for $300. Here it is now for 500. What are the first words to the song The Star Spangled Banner? Jose, can you see? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Close. Oh, say, can you see? Come along. Oh, give me a home. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies. Uh, oh, say, can you see? Yes, Drew, you're right for $500. Oh, my God. For a thousand. So Here nervous. we go. <laughs> Check this one out for a thousand. What best-selling novelist and medical school graduate created the TV series ER? Michael Crichton. Scott Turow. <laughs> Michael Crichton. <laughs> Sidney Sheldon. Michael Crichton. Robin Cook. Michael Crichton. Michael Crichton. Final answer. Yes. Michael Crichton, right answer for what? You won a thousand. Yeah. You got three lifelines. You're going for two thousand. Going to yep. try to win a million tonight, right? I'll see what I can do. All right, here it is for two thousand dollars. Which of the following stones is used in a pedicure treatment? Pumice. <laughs> True. <laughs> Sorry. I'll play along. What? Granite. Oh man. Turquoise. E. Pumice. Ooh. Limestone. Ah, uh, jeez. Oh. Uh, 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 man. Ooh. Think about it. I think maybe. I've used pumice sometimes when I used to get a pedicure, and then yeah. turquoise. I remember seeing the lady was wearing a turquoise ring. <laughs> Can I have a final <laughs> answer, please? I think pumice. Final answer. Yes, $2,000. Got it. He's up to $4,000. Yeah. Which of these requests is the title of a 1996 hit song by Tony Braxton? Undo my pain, <laughs> unbreak my heart, unchain my love. Unzip my pants. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Bro, I'm going to uh, tell Tony that you said that. I'm sorry. <laughs> How about untie my soul? <laughs> oh, uh, uh, B, unbreak my heart. There you go. Uh, final answer, Mr. Yes. Gary, you're right again for 4000 Diane Warren, the author of that song. Here it is now for $8,000. The Italian cooking term, alla primavera, means the dish includes what? Vegetables. Vegetables, sausage, cheese, fish. Uh, A, vegetables. And that's your? Yes. And, <laughs> and he's right for $8,000. my food, buddy. Unstoppable. Can't get me wrong on a food. Question. Absolutely not. <laughs> 60... Look, vegetables, I don't know, you know, but yeah, I know what they were. 16,000, seven away from a million. Here it is. In the 1979 movie, The Muppet Movie. Hey, Kermit. <laughs> Kermit and his friends travel from a Georgia swamp to where? Hollywood, New York, Treasure Island, out of space. Kermit, remember this movie? Oh, I remember this movie. Boy, do I remember this movie, but uh, I, I'm not going to tell you what the answer is. Would Atta you boy. like to know the answer? Yeah, I would, if you want to just blab it out. Maybe I could just uh, say that it has something to do with a uh, possibly the first letter of an alphabet that I've taught on Sesame Street for years. <laughs> <laughs>
Does that I don't want to give it away, you know. <laughs> I think it was Hollywood. <laughs> I'll go A, Hollywood before his head falls off. <laughs> oh, thank goodness, thank goodness. Uh, <laughs> maybe we're better off if it, but anyway, Hollywood, final answer. Yes. Yes, of course, and thank you, Kermit. Nice job. Okay, Drew, up to $32,000. Here it is. In July 2000, which of the following announced that its male members are now allowed to wear earrings when out of uniform? U.S. Postal Service? Drew Carey Fan Club. <laughs> U.S. Army? McDonald's? Boy Scouts of America? I'm going to say the Army. Final answer? Yes. Yes, the Army. $32,000. $32,000 going for $64,000. He's in terrific shape. He's five away from a million and got all of his lifelines left. You've got a big pay-per-view event coming yeah, up, right? Yeah, we're getting uh, January 27th, the Saturday night for the Super Bowl. Uh, a bunch of friends and I, we do live improv every week uh -huh. in L.A. at a club, and uh, we're going to do a live improv show on pay-per-view uh, at uh, the MGM uh, in Las Vegas. Good for you. Yeah, it's going to be great. Terrific. Yeah. All right, Drew, here we go now. $64,000, five away from the million. Let's play. <clears throat> $64,000, the 1984 Broadway musical Sunday in the Park with George was inspired by a painting by what artist? Degas, Cezanne, Surratt, Matisse. I want the John Stewart questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me uh, call my friend Sam Simon. I'm gonna waste a... You want to call uh, Sam? Yeah. All right, AT&T, we need Sam Simon on the line for Drew. Hello, Sam. Yes. Regis Philbin here from ABC and wants to be a millionaire. Hey, Regis, how you doing? I talked to you the last time Drew Carey was here. Yeah? Well, he's going for 64000 right now. Okay. And he needs some consulting and directing, okay? He's going to come on, read the question, four answers. One of them's the right answer. Drew, Great. it's all yours for 30 seconds right now. The 1984 Broadway musical Sunday in the Park with George was inspired by a painting by what artist? Degas, Cezanne, Surratt, or Matisse? The answer is C. Surratt, and we are 100% sure. Surratt, C. Boy, what a nice friend you got there. Final answer? Yes. Sam did it for 64,000. Surratt, the right answer. You're four questions away. You've got two lifelines left. Here we go for $125,000. Which of the following is another term for stage fright? Photophobia, Andantophobia, Plutophobia, Topophobia. <laughs> uh, Time to call Sam again. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me use 50-50. Uh, Computer, would you take away two of those wrong answers, please? Phonophobia. Guess? Yeah, I'm just guessing. Really? Yeah. And I'll tell you what, if I'm wrong, I'll give $32,000 out of my pocket to the library to make up the 64. It's a nice gesture. I gotta save my, I'm, it's a strategy thing. I gotta save my 50 50 for another question in case. No, you mean you gotta save your audience? You know? Yeah, they're, oh, the audience rather, in case the other ones are as tough. And phonophobia was my first guess. When I saw that's the first thing I went to. So I'll say it's phonophobia. Final answer? Sure. Oh, by gosh, it's topophobia. Ah, that's too bad. Oh, oh, too bad, Drew. <laughs> hey, uh, buddy, thanks, man. Nice to see you again, Drew. Thank you. Ah, too bad. Drew's a great guy and has already proven on this show what a great player he is. 
Well, that was kind of a tough question, wasn't it? All right, now we've got to keep it moving because here's the next fastest finger question. Here it comes. Put these albums in the order they first hit number one on the Billboard Hot 100, starting with the most recent. Abbey Road, Thriller, Hotel California. Oops, I did it again. Okay, we're already here. Let's see the answer in the correct order, starting with the most recent. Whoops, I did it again. Thriller, Hotel California. Finally, Abbey Road, that's the right order. Who got it? In the fastest time, the winner is... Back in a moment. Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen in that hot seat right now. Nice to see you, Charlie. Thank you, Regis. Nice to see Got you. Got up here on the music question. Are you a, kind of a music buff, are you? Well, yeah, I mean, to an extent where I could, I knew when Britney Spears and the uh, Beatles existed. <laughs> And that's about it, huh? That's about it, yeah. yeah. Anyway, congratulations Thank on uh, Spin City. Thank you very much. And yeah. you're playing for the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's Research. Yes, I am. Yeah. Good to see you. Yeah. You're getting quite, uh, quite a following back there. Let's see, we got Drew, we got John Stewart, we got Alec Baldwin, we got Kermit the Frog. Yes, sir. And sitting in the relationship seat, there's Jeff Ballard, a good friend of yours. Hi, Jeff, how, how you doing? Just, how you doing? Actually, you're Charlie's publicist. Yep. That's quite a job you got. Sure is. <laughs> sure. Uh, thanks for reminding me. Let's just put it this way, Jeff Ballard has earned his money. Yes, he has. Charlie, yes, you know has. the rules, you know about the lifelines. 50-50, ask the audience, phone a friend, it's all here for you. Ready to go, okay. Charlie? Let's give it Let's a shot. Let's do it, yeah. let's play. Good. Who Wants to Be a Millionaire with Charlie Sheen? $100. Charlie, if the cat falls, what will it almost always land on? A mouse? A trampoline? Its feet? Park Place. We're going to see its feet. Yes, Charlie, you're right. The cat always lands on its feet. $200. Which of these phrases is a common way to describe merchandise that is doing well in stores? Selling like hotcakes? Blue plate special? All things must go? Tastes like chicken? <laughs> I think it's A, something like that. Okay, and could it make that your final answer? <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Charlie keep, calls it his final. He's right. Yeah. He's got $200. 300 If you must deal with the consequences of your actions, Charlie, it is said you must face... <laughs> you must face the what? My father. <laughs> Sorry. It could be here, I don't yeah. know. The flag, a storm, music, flamethrower. Uh, I'm gonna go with C, music. Got that right for 300. Here it is for $500. What rock and roll icon's nickname is The Boss? Mick Jagger, Bruce Springsteen, Jerry Lee Lewis, Bob Dylan. I'm gonna go with B, Bruce Springsteen. Yeah, Bruce Springsteen is the boss. You're right. Up to $1,000 for Charlie Sheen. A person who adjusts and maintains production equipment on a movie set is called what? A Foley artist, producer, grip, director. Uh, it's got to be a grip. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I only made 50 movies. You made 50 uh, movies? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go with C, Grip. Final. Yeah. Yes, Charlie, what's the problem for $1,000? Good. So, Charlie Sheen, 1,000, going for 2,000. In deep concentration here, Charlie, focusing on this question. A Mexican tamale is traditionally wrapped and cooked. In, in what, Charlie? Why, why are you laughing? I don't know. I'm looking at Joy Behar. She's making me laugh. Tamale. Is it wrapped in bacon strips, grape leaves, potato skins, corn husks? Um, Did you ever have a tamale, uh, Norm? Oh, yeah, yeah. Norm, trying to help you. 
Dutch. 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 It's a corn husk. It's got to be a corn husk. Final right? answer, Charlie. Yeah. 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 Charlie, what's the problem? Corn husk. The right answer for the dog is out. Charlie Sheen, nine away from one million, going for 4,000. In 1923, the legendary Cotton Club opened its doors in what U.S. city? New York, New Orleans, Memphis, Detroit. Mm. The old Cotton Club, Charlie. I, I remember it being in New York. Um... If you take the A train. <laughs> Dude, I want to da, 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 da. People are singing to you, Charlie. <laughs> Doesn't sleep. Uh. Hey. Yeah, it's, 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 it's New York. It's gotta be New York. Yeah, Final okay. answer, Charlie. Yeah, New York. Yeah. Charlie says New York. He's right for four thousand dollars. We're going for eight thousand dollars right now. <clears throat> what TV talk show host played Betty Rubel in the nineteen ninety four or is it Rubble? Rubble. 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 What TV talk show host played Betty Rubble in the 1994 film The Flintstones, Charlie? Was it Sybil Shepherd, Ricky Lake, Rosie O'Donnell, Queen Latifah? She was supposed to be here, but she had surgery, right? Rosie. Yeah. Yeah, Rosie had surgery on her, on her hand, yeah. Yeah. It's got to be Rosie. Yeah, I'm going to go with C, Rosie. Final? Yeah. Yes, it was Rosie O'Donnell. Absolutely right. When we come back, Charlie Sheen goes for six. Charlie Sheen with us right now, going for sixteen thousand in just a moment. Has just joined the Spin City uh, cast, and Spin City happens to be opposite your dad's show, The West Wing. Same night, same time, huh? What are the odds? Yeah. What are the odds? How does uh, your father feel about that? Well, he's nervous because he saw, our, you know, our show, and he knows what we're up to. And um, they've peaked, essentially. <laughs> uh, so he knows he's got a, he's got a fight on his hands. That's you right. Know? Uh, no, we have to laugh about it sure. because it's very bizarre that we'd wind yeah. up, you know, on opposing networks on the same night yeah. in the same time slot. It's crazy. Charlie, you're doing terrific here. We're going for 16,000. You're seven away from a million. All your lifelines are with you. Let's play. Here we go. $16,000. What kind of animal is a terrapin? A bird. Turtle. Crab. Rat. A terrapin. What is that? Spread the news. <laughs> <laughs> Norm, that was two questions ago. Oh. <laughs> but thanks for staying in touch with us. <laughs> Kermit, what do you think? I don't want to do that. Well, I'll tell you what I think. I could be wrong, of course, because I'm only a frog, but I think I might uh, possibly live with some of these. <laughs> yeah. You yeah, know? you're probably right. Yeah. You know, back in the swamp, perhaps? Uh, uh, back in the swamp, maybe? Well, the, the, the hunches that are being offered um, are leaning towards <clears throat> turtle, no? I'm gonna go with turtle. All right. Yes, 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 yes. What has happened to the integrity of this show? <laughs> it's evaporated. <laughs> well, we're gonna get serious later on, but right now you want to say turtle as your sure. final answer? Yep. Got it, Charlie. For six thousand dollars. Charlie, you still have the lifelines. You're six away from a million. We're looking at the thirty-two thousand dollar question. Here it comes. In, in a 1999 episode of The X-Files, which character claims to be Fox Mulder's biological father? A well-manicured man? Walter Skinner? Alex Krychek? A cigarette-smoking man? <clears throat> Regis, Regis Philbin. <laughs> Was that you, Norm? No, but I think he could have gone to the trouble of finding out these characters' names. <laughs> Why do I keep turning around? I'm sorry, Charlie. Know. Somebody just yell it out. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. 
Well, it's a you know it's a, it's a popular show, and um, I'm sure the audience is familiar with yeah. this. I'm going to go to the audience. I yeah. think you're doing the right thing, okay. Charlie. Okay, audience, we need your help. If you're ready, on your keypads, using A, B, C, or D, vote now. Well, there you go, 68% say it's that cigarette smoking man. Let's see if they're right, yeah. Want to make it your? I'll make it my final, yeah. Charlie. Audience was right for 32 <laughs> Thank you, audience. All right, Charlie Sheen, relentless here. Got 32, going for 64. Five away from the million. Here it comes. Which continent is nearest the intersection of zero degrees latitude and zero degrees longitude? South America, Australia, Africa, Antarctica. Hmm. Probably a baseball question like next. <laughs> yeah. Um, Want to call somebody, Charlie? I don't know. I, I, I'm tempted to do a 50 50. Um, yeah, it's probably not a bad idea. I'm leaning towards Antarctica. Zero latitude, zero longitude. Um, yeah, let's go with a 50 50. All right, computer, take away two of those wrong answers for us. Thank you. Well, so, see? Antarctica not in there. Australia, Africa. Hmm. You'll always leave with 32,000 no matter what happens. But you want to stay in the game, of course. So we got uh, still have that phone a friend if you're still not. Yeah, let's give him a call. Who do you want to call? I want to call Michael Fox. Okay, good. Let's call Michael J. Yeah. at and ring us, Michael J. Fox. Hello? Hello, Michael. Yes. Regis Philbin here. How you doing? Regis Philbin, how are you? <laughs> well, I'm here. I'm, I'm here with your, your pal, Charlie Sheehan. Charles, how's Charles doing? Well... It's been an adventure, let's put it that way. <laughs> it always is with Charles. <laughs> but he's only five away from a million. He's won 32,000, going for 64. Looking to you for some help here, okay? All right, I'll do my best. All right, Mike. He's going to come on the line. He's going to give you the question and just two answers, two possible answers. Standard two, okay. Charlie, it's all yours. 30 seconds right now. Mike, which continent is nearest the intersection of zero degrees latitude and zero degrees longitude? Australia or Africa? Um, which is nearest zero yeah. degrees latitude and zero degrees longitude? Yeah, Australia, Australia or Africa? Or Africa. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, my thinking probably is is Africa. I'm not sure of that, but I, uh, isn't zero degrees, zero degrees, isn't that? Greenwich, I'm thinking maybe that's wrong, but I'm, I'm going to say Africa. Africa? Let's say he just wasn't too sure, was he? <laughs> well, that was his first impulse. Um, and if he's wrong, you I can blame it him. It's his charity. There you go. <laughs> you know. Got that, Mike? Um, yeah, let's let's give it a shot. Let's go with Mike Fox's uh, Africa. Yeah. You, would you say that's Michael Fox's final answer? I believe it is. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, what do you know? Michael J. Fox is right for sixty-four. from Spin City, doing quite well, going for $125,000. But now all the lifelines are gone. Yeah. Okay, four away from a million, let's take a look at it for $125,000, let's play. In the year 2000, which of these multi-billionaires released a rock album with his band, Grown Men? 
Jeffrey Bezos, Paul Allen, Richard Branson, Pierre Omidir. This will be an absolute guess. Well, now, if you guess and you get it wrong, guess. you're going to lose 32. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I didn't, I didn't crack the higher level, but um, I, I'm sure there's a lot of people that, uh, that could use that, that kind of money. And, and to just, on a, on a guess, cut it in half, uh, I think would be uh, kind of reckless. And, no, I think Michael J. Fox would love getting this for his foundation. Sure. $64,000. Want, want to call it quits? It's, it's the smart thing to do. I think it's the respectful thing to do. I understand. Yeah. You want to take a guess, just for the heck of it? Um, maybe a kind of a, a, a Paul Allen type move. I don't know. Paul Allen? Would have been right for 125000 Charlie, don't worry about it. 64000 Thank you. Great job. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I love it all. Sheehan and Michael J. Fox walk away with $64,000 for Parkinson's research. Running out of time right now, so here's the next fastest finger question. Put these landmarks in geographical order, starting in the U.S. and going east. Vatican, Taj Mahal, Golden Gate Bridge, Stonehenge. Okay, everybody, time's up. Let's see the answer in the correct order, starting in the U.S. and going east, Golden Gate Bridge, and then Stonehenge, Vatican, finally, Taj Mahal. That's the right order. Who got it in the fastest time? The winner is... Yes, John Lovitz in the hot seat. Good for you. What charity are we playing for? Uh, it's called Holly Grove, and it's an orphanage in Los Angeles. It's one of the oldest orphanages there for uh, abused and neglected children. Uh huh. And actually, it's been around a long time. Marilyn Monroe stayed there, and she was a that kid. Right? That's yeah. And, but they help all these kids, and you know, help. And it's it's a great organization. Sounds like a terrific yeah. cause. I think Dana Carvey played for them as well last time. Yeah, Dana yeah. did too. Yeah. All right, good enough. We're out of time, but we're going to get no, into I, but I, I, as many questions as we can. Here it is, John. You know the rules. You know the lifelines. Ready <coughs> to play? Who wants to be a millionaire? Sure you do. Here it is for $100. Here we go. John, what sound are geese said to make? I don't know. Honk. Bark. Oh. Chirp. Ooga, ooga. <laughs> They honk. Yeah, they honk, John. You're right for a hundred. Two hundred dollars. The letter in which a woman ends a relationship is commonly called a what? A letter of intent? RSVP, John? A Dear John letter? Subpoena. Well, let's see. I've only gotten two hundred of these. <laughs> uh, C, Dear Me letter. <laughs> Final answer? Yes! Yes, $200. You got it. 300 The soft drink Sprite <laughs> advertises its flavor as a combination of lemon and what? Yes. Ginger? <laughs> lime? Guava? Bacon? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel so stupid. You, you've had a Sprite, haven't you? No. Then you got a problem. <laughs> hey, John. Hey, John. Yeah? What color am I? That's what I said. All right, I'll go with the B line. <laughs> Final answer. Yeah, yes. Yes, Kermit, you're absolutely right for $300. <laughs> Thank you, Kermit. Thanks a lot. Yes, that sound means but we're I, out of time I, for tonight. I, I, but, John, you'll be back here tomorrow night. Will you? <laughs> I hope so. 
And joining John will be five more celebrities who can't wait to get into this hot seat. And they are Joy Behar, Tyra Banks, John Puffy Combs, Vivica A. Fox, and Norm MacDonald. Hey, another action packed night here. Stay tuned now for a brand new Donna and Great coming up next on ABC. And we'll be back with John and the rest of our celebrities tomorrow night at 8, 7 Central. From New York, everybody, good night.